God and evil can't both coexist. But then again, I'm not you. Hey, and welcome to the Takeaway Podcast. I am Tanner Treffin, joined by Pastor Joey Rumble, and we're breaking down the message from this past Sunday, I'm Not You, as we introduce the book of Job. Oh, yeah, it was great. Great message, really challenging. You tackled such a tough topic of why suffering and and the problem of evil. This is great. Thanks. Solid. Yeah, it was a, a joy to get to and an honor to get to talk about that. And uh, you came back from Hawaii representing your Hawaii yeah, gear. U- University of Hawaii. And yeah. uh, I heard Casey calling you the turtle man. So <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, Dakota had came back with a University of Hawaii shirt. So I, I went to the thrift store and looked through the rack and they had one right there. Yeah, I guess you didn't Got really. a good deal on it. You know, it's hard to say that you're experiencing intense suffering while you're over there in Hawaii. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. You're right. Um, but yeah, uh, man, the book is so good. Uh, some some things I didn't get to talk about is as I was researching about Job, um, is Job's like such an interesting book. And so many people, we don't know a lot about it, basically in the sense of there's debate about who the author is. There's debate about the time period of when it was written um, uh, that... Some people think it's like the first book chronologically, um, but other people think uh, it actually like quotes uh, a, a Bible verse in it. And so it's like, well, it knows about scripture, so it had to come like later. Mm-hmm. And it is, is and none of the characters are Hebrew except for Elihu, the last friend, the fourth friend that comes at the end. He actually has a Hebrew name. Um, and so that's just interesting stuff I learned. It uh, sure is. Sure yeah. is. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, as you, as you jump in and look at the book of Job, I don't know, how does it kind of, when you first read it, like when you read about his life and all that happened to him, how does that kind of hit you? Yeah, I just read through the whole book of Job uh, last couple of weeks. I spent time, you know, just, and I've read it in like two or three days, so a full sitting, it's, which so is totally different when you read it thoroughly like that and it's just a couple of chapters a day, you know, but so it just, it, it's very uh, simple to follow the outline of it. You know, and so just the the whole intro of Job being blessed and and God, uh, he's blessed by the hand of God. Then the conversation between God and Satan, and is Job going to love God even though he doesn't have the blessings of God, and and that piece. And then it goes into the three friends, which we'll be looking at this coming week. I can't wait for that. Job and his three friends, and and that whole dialogue. And then it ends with probably my most life changing one of my top five life-changing moments from Scripture from the Lord in my life where God speaks to Job in Job 38. Uh, so that and it's just that response. And the whole time Job's wrestling and watching that wrestling match and him praying to the Lord because he's wrestling, but he's praying. He's talking with God. And and uh, I can't wait next week to dive in about his friends and how to effectively help people uh, in, in the Lord and 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 uh, not knowing everything, being careful how you approach people. Yeah, um, talking about the, one of the first points I made in the message of um, don't be quick to give your response and your answer why God and, and evil you know can coexist and why God allows suffering, but to be a listener and and to ask the the Columbo tactic of why do you think that and why do you believe that and, and what do you mean by that and all, and all those type of questions to kind of see where they're coming from. Um, and then if they're struggling with pain, just to love on them. Man, uh, the, th- the three friends that show up, they show up and they just sit there with Job for seven days and seven nights. And so, and then they totally blow it out for that. And so I guess the lesson that I learned from that is, man, if, if someone's going through an intense suffering, just being quiet for a little is not enough. You know, there's, a, there's a long time you got to just be there with them and listen. Oh, and stuff that's like good. That. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Um, I, the part that helped me, one of the met parts is knowing that there's a pain within as people are struggling with suffering and, and why there is a God. Digging deep to those heart issues that hurt that was big, and I got to always remember that because sometimes I'm defend, 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 mm-hmm. uh, be right. Well, you know, we, we know that God's word's true and that he, he, he honors his word. Uh, so don't be so nervous to protect and defend 
love that person and, and, and listen to their pain. Yeah, um, when I was listening to Jay Warner Wallace, he had such a great point about that. A lot of times we as Christians are so like insecure about our faith almost. We're not like confident that we know the truth. Yeah. Um, that when people like start to say like God and you know evil can't go together, uh, we get all like defensive like you're talking about and like come back like little chihuahuas, you know, uh-huh. biting and attacking back. And he said, no, like our faith, you want to feel more like a great Dane, like that you have this like big, massive yeah. evidence for your faith and this confidence um, that you don't need to defend God, but God's like this roaring lion um, and he can defend himself yeah. and, and just just love and speak truth and from, not from a place of insecurity, but from confidence. So. Yeah, it's huge. And what spoke to me on that, uh, you shared right around in that time frame in your message about understanding that God gave us free will, that to choose to love Him, a choose, and and so it's powerful. And to me, that's a, the great response. You still struggle, and, and I don't think we'll ever have the answer till we get to heaven of why certain things were allowed or why this happened. Uh, but God took the hit for us on the cross, mm-hmm. that he loves us, that the God of all creation, yeah, I don't have all the answers, but I know he took the hit for us on the cross. Yeah, that really helps me at the last point of um, of not getting bitter in your suffering yes. and mad at God. Um, just as my cousin Zach uh, was suffering on my behalf when in my suffering, Christ suffers on our behalf in our suffering as well. He's not just some distant God who doesn't care. Um, yeah. So that's just huge for me. Oh, it, it is huge. Um it, it, because one of the biggest things we struggle with as Christians is we can get mad at God. And man, if you're mad at God, I'm not talking about wrestling with God or being on, you know, those kind of things. And we'll look at more of that this week, but just being so angry at God, that can cause you to, you know, just turn from him and do some very poor, make some very poor choices in your life. Cause you gotta be able to run to him cause you need his strength not to live in sin. And so when you're mad at God, you're not receiving that strength because there's this rift and you desperately need the source of the Lord in your life to, to live and overcome and live a blessed life. And, and speaking of that, uh, I think um, we make our suffering worse as well. You're talking about there because the one point of Job is Job was blameless and upright. It wasn't because of some sin he did that he was getting all this horrible stuff happening in his life. And so we can suffer for reasons other than our sin. Yes. Um, but in that, once we start experiencing that suffering, as soon as we start hardening our heart and getting mad at God, and you know, then we can start sinning in our suffering and pushing people away and being bitter yeah. and all that stuff. And then we make our suffering even worse because yeah. we add sin on top of it and sin always brings death and more pain and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and, and suffering can be used to develop character in a major way. So let's lean in that way. And God, okay, God, help me learn this lesson. What's going on? Uh, I, and, and I look at some of the suffering in my life where it's developed strong character because of it. And on this, I think this is really important um, of the point Satan was making to God is Job only loves you because you bless him. Mm-hmm. You know, if you do this to him, he'll curse you to your face. A lot of times when we go through suffering, we run to other idols for comfort. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we run to alcohol or, and get drunk or we run to pornography or whatever. And, and these, these uh, false, you know, places of comfort that only make the problem worse and, and really do curse God because thank God you couldn't comfort me. You couldn't actually help me in this situation. So I'm going to run to some other place. Yeah. And so where do we run in our suffering, I think, is a huge point. Of, of who our God is. In that and that's time. why we run to the Lord. Mm-hmm. You got to run to the Lord and, and wrestle with him, wrestle, uh, but know that, you know, he, he knows best. And so we're going to really dive into a lot more of that wrestling this week. I believe it's going to be life changing. You don't want to miss it about just Job and his three friends is an incredible opportunity to look at the growth of Job and his closeness with the Lord, but also how to help others. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great book. i um, excited to dive into it more and hear what you have to say. Um, to, I listened to a sermon by uh, Dr. Norman Geisler, um, who's one of the like super awesome original apologists that were defending the faith, you know, that like was the kind of the teacher of like apologists now, like Frank Turek and, and Z- Ravi Zacharias, you know, even though with all that, that stuff there. Um, Anyways, I listened to a sermon by him, and two points he addressed that I didn't have time to address in the sermon is where did evil come from? Like, because it kind of, if you say, like, well, Adam needs sin because Satan, you know, was there and Satan tempted him, and then someone asked, well, where does Satan come from? Um, and if God only makes good creatures, 
and and if there was no Satan in the beginning, you know, like how did Satan do evil? Uh, and he addressed that, and he said that um, Satan was a, a good creature created by God, uh, who had free choice just like Adam and Eve did. And it, there doesn't need to be evil already existing for evil to happen. There can be a good creature that picks a lesser good. And in that moment, Satan, um, you know, should have been all about worshiping God. But in that moment, he picked a lesser good of focusing on himself, yeah. and, you know, and, and making himself focused instead of focusing on God. And and that it can be the origin of evil right there. And so I, I thought it was an interesting point. No, that's a strong point. That's really good. And the other one was the the persistence of evil. You know, if, if God is good and He's able to stop evil and He wants to stop evil, well, since evil still is going on, he, he something has to be off there. You know, why didn't He stop it? And uh, the point is, just because God hasn't stopped it, uh, doesn't mean He will. He won't in some time in the future. That not yet. He just hasn't done it yet. And He can have good reasons for allowing evil to go on into a certain point. And He could end it right now. You know, He could come back and um, He already defeated on the cross, like you were saying, like an official defeat where He defanged and declawed the enemy. Um, but He will uh, finally and authoritatively af- defeat evil with so Satan. And the lake of fire and all that um, at, a, at, a, at a second coming. And, and, you know, we can read about that in Revelation and, and be confident uh, as, as a Christian that God is a just God. He will punish evil fully and totally, but just in his perfect timing, not in ours. So. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. And this, this, this time here on earth is temporary. We've got to keep remembering this season is temporary so that... Uh, you know, that pain you're going through, you realize that it's temporary, but also this is, this is our moment to help others overcome evil, to overcome pain, to, to, to join them in their suffering. Yeah. Which we'll look at this week. Yeah. Uh, and so like a big takeaway, my takeaway from the message for me was, uh, when other people are suffering, uh, to be there and, you know, don't give all my answers, but be more of a listener and just show that I care. And then when I'm suffering, just to run to God, to not minimize that, um, but to make him my source of comfort. So. Yeah. And, and for me, my big takeaway is when you're talking to someone who's not saved, just listen more to their pain points. And then, then those who are struggling, who know the Lord, same thing, though. You listen to their pain points. You join them there. And then also don't allow a rift between me and God. Like if I'm angry at God, if I'm mad at God, confess it. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, I am mad at you. And, and, and so wrestle, but don't let it become a rift. And so uh, I think Job really speaks to that in a big way. So those are my biggies. Yeah, and uh, another easy takeaway, or I guess easy, you know, take some commitment though, is uh, reading those books I mentioned um, by Greg Kokel of Tactics and Street Smarts just to know how to wisely share your faith um, in different situations. It's, it's just excellent on that. Yeah, so you can pause it right now and write, write those names down to those two titles and uh, read those. And also go back and watch the message that you preached because you had several slides there that were solid of uh, that teaching, but also one, William Lane Craig, that was really helpful as well, that gives us handles. Yeah, and those are real easy to search on YouTube. Dr. Craig Videos is the channel, and just go to his animated video playlist, and all those videos are excellent, like five-minute videos that give you helpful apologetic defenses. Cool. That's awesome. And and if you listen to that this week on time, uh, we have Men's Night this uh, Friday night at 6.30. Man, you don't want to miss it. It is going to be amazing. We'll eat together and, and then uh, have worship, teaching, hang out, have some games. It's going to be a great night. Yeah, I'm excited. You're up on the stage going, hoo, hoo, hoo. I don't know, like <laughs> trying to get the, the testosterone going or there something. There we go. So. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. And also next Sunday as we continue our journey through the book of Job, Job and his three friends. You don't want to miss it. Cool. Well, thanks so much for joining, church. What's your takeaway? Because if you want to make headway, you need a takeaway. So it's walking that together. God bless you. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon.